Welcome to the Pasho Perspective, a place where I share my perspective on everything in the space between life and death. I am your host, Pasho. Today we're going to talk about Jordan Peterson's rule number 10, be precise in your speech. Bring everything out of the realm of the unspeakable so that you can bear upon it. Don't be like Harry Potter when talking about the main antagonist, Voldemort, where everybody in the first movie was so spooked out and terrified by him that they wouldn't even say his name. You know, he who shall not be named. But when you don't name it, when you don't bring it out to light, it becomes more terrifying in your imagination. What could start off as a tiny dragon that can be slayed if you can just muster up the courage to take it on could become a huge monster because your imagination makes things worse than they actually are. And so you have to be honest in what you are dealing with. You have to be honest in what you want to change. And you have to be precise in what you expect in the world. You know, it's not enough to just go out there and say, I want to find a girlfriend or a boyfriend or I want to find a husband or a wife. You've got to be precise. Really, will anybody do? Will you be okay? Will you be okay with a boyfriend who beats you? Will you be okay with a girlfriend who takes you for granted? Will you be okay being married to a man who doesn't express himself emotionally and makes you feel isolated in the world? Right? I mean, you don't want that. And so why would you just ask for some vague generality? You know, I mean, be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. And so, yeah, you ask for a boyfriend and then you get one with an alcoholism problem, you know, and, you know, he's not very nice. Cutting, is that what you want? Instead of just allowing then the universe to pull anything close to you, why not set an aim that's a little bit more focused and specific? How about instead of saying, I want a boyfriend, you say, I want a man who is kind to other people. I want a man who doesn't raise his voice. I want a man who is patient and is sensitive, but can also be strong when I need him to be strong. I want a man who's going to be honest with me and share his feelings and tell me about his past and his friends and his family so that I'm actually in his life and that I become the one, not just another one. You know, why not ask for things like that? Instead of asking, you know, God, please give me a girlfriend. How about give me a woman who's kind? Give me a woman that will be an amazing mother to my children and will love them unconditionally and will love me unconditionally and will be patient with me and will love me for the man that I am, not for the vision she has of me in the future. You can't fall in love with my potential. You have to fall in love with who I am. And so ask for that. You know, give me somebody who's going to accept me as I am. Not somebody who's going to want to change me. You know, not somebody like in the Princess Diary who's going to strip me of my glasses, pull out my ponytail, shake my hair out, and then all of a sudden make me this sexy beast. I want somebody who likes me in my glasses, who likes the ponytail, who has the hots for the librarian look. You know, be precise in what you want. And then if you get what you ask for, ask and you shall receive, then it's actually what, you know, you've always dreamt of. Ask for vague generalities and you're going to get vague generalities. What else does Jordan Peterson say in rule number 10? Well, he says that God made the world by speaking. So there is an integral relationship between communication and the structure of being. Language takes chaos and puts them into categories. Like naming all the animals. This is a man. This is a woman. When you start changing the meaning of words, you start changing people's perceptions. And if you can change their perceptions, then you can change their reality. And is that what's happening in today's culture? Are we changing the meanings and definitions of things because we are attempting to void then the meaning of all words? I mean, think about it. If a man can mean anything and a woman could mean anything, then any word could be changed if there's nothing concrete and universal. 
And if you really take that another step further, what is our Constitution? I mean, our Constitution is a collection of words, well thought out and precise words from our amazing founding fathers who saw different types of government and the corruptions that would occur and recognized the value of human liberty and life. To change something like murder and call it health care? You're changing people's perceptions and no wonder they're going crazy because 50 years you've been feeding them something that doesn't mean what it means. That word you keep using, I don't think it means what you think it means. Be precise. If you have an argument with your wife, tell her what you didn't like. And women do the same thing. Don't say, I'm fine. Nothing's wrong. And then you avoid the correction. You avoid then the reward of being honest. This is precisely what I don't like that you did. If you can avoid doing that on you know, a more frequent occasion, it would make me happier. And if I'm happier, the relationship will probably flourish a lot better, a lot longer than if you keep driving me insane by doing this thing or saying these things, or going to this place, you know? I mean, I don't know. But you, ha you have to be unafraid, and you have to have the words. You know, I recommend you read Michael Knowles' book, Speechless. I don't get any money or royalties, all right? He doesn't even know me, but I love the man. I think he's very funny. Uh, definitely more neutral, I think, than all of the uh, different characters on uh, The Daily Wire, which I also recommend if you want to learn the truth. You know, go there. I don't think Denzel Washington, you know, would agree that if you watched or listened to The Daily Wire that you would be misinformed. It is certainly different than the liberal media. Uh, and it's pretty great so far, you know, just to give them a little more plug because I do enjoy it and I recommend that you check it out. Uh, they got a great family film called The Hyperions. And, uh, you know, it's about kind of superheroes, but it's really about family. And I tear up all the time at the end. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be showing my kids over the weekend on our family uh, movie night so that they can see it. Uh, I'm trying to watch Shut In. Uh, I'm, you know, excited for the film. I'm sure it's really well done. It's gotten some great reviews. But I don't know. Honestly, I am hesitant because it's just it's so real, you know. And there is evil out there, and there are people like that who exist who would lock you in a pantry and use your child as a you know way to motivate you to do things, you know, to regress back into your drug addictions and stuff. And I mean, I don't know, I don't know if it hits home too much or whatever, but I, I am going to see it someday. I'm going to muster up the strength, but I, I recommend that you all check that out. Definitely read that book. Other books that I would recommend that you read, uh, Mark Levine's American Marxism, what a great book. Uh, How to Destroy America in 10 Easy Steps by Ben Shapiro was a great read. Um, Blackout by Candace Owens was awesome. Tipping Talking Points with uh, Elizabeth uh, I'm drawing a, a, a blank here. I wish I remembered her name. Wheeler, Elizabeth Wheeler. She was, you know, a phenomenal book too. Don't Burn This Book by David Rubin. Uh, I really like that as well. Fortitude by Ben Crenshaw. And uh, let's throw one more in there. Why not, right? Uh, ten, top 10 Reasons for Voting for a Democrat, I think out of all of those books, has got to be my absolute number one favorite. It certainly is my nine-year-old's favorite. Uh, book to read. It's the easiest one to read. And uh, honestly, it's probably the most true, true uh, piece of literature that has ever been published other than perhaps Shakespeare or uh, Uncle Walt Whitman. <laughs> uh, but all jokes aside, guys, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, just a short episode. It's not too complex of a rule, right? Be precise. Don't be afraid to ask for what you want. And, you know, if the more precise you are, hopefully then the more precise uh, the aim and the more precise than the target that and the rewards that you get from hitting it, right? So um, as always, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, please share, like, leave a review, do all those wonderful things for me. If you think the program is worth watching to get other people exposure to it, uh, you know, the greatest flattery you can give me is to give me a share with all of your friends. And um 
We'll see you next week where we will most likely discuss Jordan Peterson's Rule 11. Until then, have an awesome day.